Hey everybody, it's Zach Hurst with EV Resource and I have today another video about the Arkimoto FUV. If you watched any of my previous videos, you'll know, and it's very clear, that the Arkimoto FUV is one of my favorite electric vehicles I've ever had the opportunity to test. After two weeks of having it on loan in February, when it was colder, and one day it did have a light rain, I really wanted to express my excitement and joy about the FUV, because every single day I wanted to get out and ride around. I didn't care what the weather was like. A lot of you have left some comments that were quite fair. This is not a car and it's missing a lot of the creature comforts that a car would have. If Arkimoto is going to be successful in replacing the vehicles that we use to commute to and from work or run errands like grocery shopping or even what delivery drivers would use to deliver last mile packages or food with the Deliberator, there are some things that could really be improved about the Arkimoto FUV that just aren't there yet. So in this video, in addition to sharing my top five favorite things about the Arkimoto FUV, I'm also going to dive into some of the things that I don't like, things that I would absolutely change if this were mine, and really things I wish the company would change for everybody that they are eventually going to sell one of the FUV models to. We'll start off with my five favorite things about the Arkimoto FUV. There is no ranking or particular order to these. They're just what I love the most. Coming from experience with motorcycles, one of my favorite things about the Arkimoto is that it has handlebars instead of a traditional steering wheel. I've found that this feature really makes it a lot more fun to drive because you engage so much more with the vehicle while driving. You've got your throttle control and regenerative braking with your right hand, turn signal, lights, and horn with your left hand, and of course you've got the screen in front of you that tells you all of the important information you need to know while driving. While I love the sound of a nice throaty V8 engine, I've found the jet engine-like sound of the Arkimoto's electric motors to be just as awesome and addicting. This is easily one of my favorite things, and there's really nothing else I can say about it. Third thing has got to be the windshield and the roof. And that's purely for comfort, where if you're driving and it's less than 70 degrees, the air is kind of cold. And so having this windshield and roof here really just pushes the air around you. It makes it a lot more comfortable. You don't have to worry about bugs flying in your face. And I don't, honestly, like having a windshield, we take that for granted when we're driving around cars. But coming from a motorcycle perspective, adding a windshield is a game changer. Like that makes such a big difference. Definitely this list would not be complete without mentioning that. It may seem obvious, but three wheels are better than two. On a two-wheeled motorcycle, if you lose traction with one of your wheels, the chances of you laying down the bike are pretty high. And if you do get into an accident, there is nothing there that will protect your body from impact. That's why riders should always wear a full helmet and protective gear. The Arkimoto FUV, on the other hand, is much safer. It has a full roll cage, two three-point seat belts, the aforementioned three wheels, and its profile is larger and taller than a motorcycle, which increases visibility. These things cut down on the likelihood of getting into an accident, or if one did occur, you're much more protected than if you were on a motorcycle. I have to ask, ask away. Man, I love the look of I've never seen one before. Take her out the block? Yeah. I'm doing a film. No word. Get on back to the car up here. 
if you don't like attention, then the Arkimoto FUV is not for you. Everywhere I went, it had people asking questions or looking over and smiling, especially kids who just thought it was the coolest thing. As someone who has always enjoyed getting attention, this was something that really added to the experience for me. So that's kind of my top five, because I am gonna limit it. You know, it's very, very fun to drive. Most fun of any vehicle I probably have ever driven. It's got motorcycle feel and handlebar controls. Uh, part of that that I didn't mention, of course, is just that you're open air, so you can see and hear and smell everything. I've mentioned that in other videos. Something that I really, really like. I love the sound, love the windshield, the roof, and of course that it's safe and stable. So getting into the things that I really don't like, or things that I would want to see improved about the Arkimoto FUV. The intended design of the Arkimoto FUV is for it to be a shorter range, urban, lower speed vehicle that is primarily used for commuting or running errands. In order to limit weight and size, the decision was made to go with a small battery pack, only around 18 kilowatt hours or so. The result of this decision is that combined with its horrible aerodynamic efficiency, and I'll get to that, it has a very limited range, especially when traveling at higher speeds. Yes, the FUV is capable of 75 miles an hour, but at that speed, your range is cut down to only 35 miles or so, depending on conditions. In order to reach the EPA rated 102 mile range, you have to be going slower around the city. The battery pack design also means that the FUV does not have the ability to fast charge. The minimum voltage required for CCS charging in North America is 200 volts. The pack voltage in the Arkimoto is only 102 volts. So in addition to not being able to go fast for very long, you can't charge fast either. The company says that charging the FUV takes as long as four hours on a 240 volt level two charger but I've found that when it's colder outside, it actually could take longer. For most people, this probably doesn't matter if you're driving it during the day and charging overnight, but it does limit the ability of the Arkimoto to travel longer distances in a short period of time. This kind of goes along the same line of thinking where aerodynamic efficiency affects range, especially the faster you're going. The open cockpit nature of the FUV combined with the open fenders on the front wheels and combined with things sticking out of the sides like mirrors, all adds up to an aerodynamic design that leaves a lot to be desired. There are definitely some easy things that could be done to improve this, but I would expect that that would certainly add to the cost of the FUV. And yes, the FUV is, in my opinion, too expensive. Currently, the price of the FUV starts at $17,900 before you add any of the additional options like a vinyl wrap or paint, colored wheels, doors, rear cargo box, phone mount, cup holder, and many others. In my opinion, this is about $3,000 too expensive because primarily of the limiting factors that I had mentioned in the previous three points. If it cost less than $15,000, I would likely order one immediately. The good news is that the company also thinks the price is too high and has said that they hope ramping up production can help them lower unit costs, and I really hope that happens. This list just wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention that most people who would consider buying the FUV would want to have complete doors and windows for all weather capability. If the company wants to sell the FUV in all 50 states and internationally, making sure people are comfortable and protected from the elements is a must. The good news is that the company does have plans to bring full doors and windows to market and add AC and heating as well. So hopefully we don't have to wait too long to see this improvement. 
So to summarize this entire video, the FUV is really good at all the things it was designed to be really good at, and mostly falls short on only the things it just wasn't designed to be or do. Aside from the price, I really don't think the company should change much in order to make it a more compelling purchase for a lot of people. If the company really wants to replace the massive, heavy, inefficient vehicles we currently use in our day-to-day -day lives, they really don't have to make many changes to their product. Getting people convinced to make such a drastic change is really where they'll have the most work cut out for them, and I really hope that they are successful in doing that. I believe in the mission, I believe in the product and the people that are working there, and I really believe the company has the potential for greatness. There's no doubt that they have a lot of work ahead of them to ramp up production to the levels they need to be in order to be profitable and sustain the life of the company long term, but I believe they can do it and I'm excited to see where the company is in the coming years.